Hi there. In the previous video, we got the character to move around and also got the camera to follow the character. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the asymmetric tile map for this and how to configure the images. This is the part six of this series. So if you want to see the other parts, there are links in description for the playlists and I have two playlists. So if you're interested in the bolt version of it, there's one playlist and the C sharp is in another playlist. So check those out. So let's get started. I will remove the grid with all the tiles and let's hide the objects for now but i'll probably gonna remove the objects as well so we just start with our characters for the assets i'm gonna use the space kit from kenny's assets i'll leave a link in description to this page and when you download it these actually are 3d models but in this kit you also have side images and there are pngs and also isometric I'm going to be using the isometric images here. So let's start with the timeline. In the hierarchy in Unity, let's add 2D objects. And you have different options for tile maps, but the one I'm looking for is the isometric tile map. So let's create that. And that creates a grid and a tile map. To add tiles to the tile map, we need to create a tile map palette. And for that, we'll need the images. So let's go to the isometric folder for our kit. I'll use these images right here. And then I need a plain one and also all the corners. So here are the four corners. That's all of the ones that I'll need for that. Now I'm also going to use a plain tile, this orange one right here. And that is it for my tiles. To create a tile palette, we can go to window, 2D, and right here we have a tile palette. Open that, we get this window, and in here we can create our new tile palette. So right there. Select that and I'll call it BG palette. For the grid, I'll go with isometric. And for the cell size, I'll select manual and have it at 1.5 and 1. Click create. It's asking for a folder where I want to place this palette. So I'll create a new folder, call it tile map and just place it inside there. Now I'm gonna dock this to the side right here with the inspector. So it's gonna be easier for me to work with. And once you have a palette created, you can drag the tiles or sprites inside here. And let's drag this sprite right here. So let's drop in here. It's asking for where we want to create this tile asset. So again, I'm gonna go to tile map and save it inside here. Now you can see right away that it's not actually fitting the grid. So there's some adjustments that I have to do to these sprites to make him fit here. So let's select that sprite and go to inspector and go to the sprite editor. In the sprite editor, you can see that the sprite is not actually made to be used as a tile. It's just an isometric image, but we're going to fix that. And to do that, I need to just select this portion right here. And the way that you can do that in Unity, I'm going to switch from single to multiple and click apply. So I can re-slice this sprite, click on the slice, and I'll just leave it automatic and click slice. Once I do that, it just finds that single image and creates a box around it. And that is all that I had to do for this one. Click apply. And if we go back to the tile map, we can see that it disappeared from here. And in a tile map folder, we can still see it here, but it's not going to work because our sprite is disconnected. When you go through the slicing process, there's a new sprite that gets created. And that's why we have that disconnection. We can drag that inside here to connect it back. So that changed the preview image and if we go to the tile palette, we can see it now. So now we can select a tile and we can see it in our grid view as well. We can paint it on, but we still have an issue of it being bigger than the grid. That's because of the pixel per unit measurement. Now I think Canny Assets is using 128 pixels per unit ratio. So we can type that in, click apply, and now it's fitting perfectly. So with that, we got our first tile and we can paint those tiles in into our tile map. And there's some options that you have here. So you have the brush tool, then you have the other option, which is just creating a box of those tiles, the erase tool, and also a fill tool. So you can try out those options. Now let's add our other tiles. I'll have to go through the same process of going from single to multiple and also convert it to 128. Let's click apply. And for this one, we also need to go through the sprite editor and slice him. So click slice, apply. And basically this process right here, you got to do for every single sprite that you have. Alrighty, that's the final one. 
and now we can add them to a tile palette. You can go and add them separately, but you can also just select multiple of them and drag them into the tile palette. We'll also save it in the tile map and it's going to create all of those for you. Now it adds them in the order that you select them, I guess, but I find it easier if you actually arrange them. So one way you can create a custom arrangement is by going to tile map and using these tiles right here that you've created to create an arrangement. So let's make a box exactly how we want it to be displayed. Place those corners in first, then we'll place in the sides. And then the middle. Now right away you can see that the corners are not really fitting in correctly. So we'll have to do some adjustments to those corners. And I'll show you how to do an adjustment to one of them and I'll quickly do the adjustment for the other ones. I'm going to try to fix this one right here. So let's go to the sprite and find it inside here. This one right here. I'll have to go to the sprite editor, open up tile map to see what's going on here. And basically how I'm going to fix it is by shifting the pivot point. So for that, I'll have to modify the pivot. So switch to pixels and set pivot to custom. And now we need to shift the Y. So I need to make it a little bit smaller. I think somewhere around 31 apply. And I think that will work for me. So you can do the same thing to the other corners as well. So switch to custom. And for this one, I actually need to move it in X position. That will do. So there we go. That's how you can adjust those tiles. And now we can place these tiles in our scene. You can select multiple of them at once and you can see how it looks here. If I place it right now, you can see that there are transparent corners right there. And because we have those beveled corners, that's not how we want to add them. Instead, we want to add on top of the bottom layer. And you can use this option right here, can change Z position and set it to like one. And now these tiles are going to be placed on top of the other one. So another layer. So now we don't have those transparent corners. If you want to create a bigger surface than this right here, we'll have to go and create it using this single tiles. Get the middle part first, select it like that, then get the side. And I'm using the paint filled box tool right here. Get the other side, paint it in, get the corners. So something like that. Now, if you want to add more of this orange tiles, don't forget to change the Z position. You can also modify your palette. So you can click edit right here and let's erase these tiles right here because we don't need them. Click edit again to exit the edit mode of the palette and you can start placing those tiles. You can also make different arrangements of those tiles in your palette. So then you can reuse standard size palettes that way. So you have lots of options here that you can use. And with that, we'll stop here for this video. And in the next video, I'm going to add a tile map with colliders and also show you how to work with the image sorting issue that we have. For some of the objects, I'm not going to be using the tile map to place them in the scene. So all of that, we're going to take a look in the next video. And after that, I think we'll be ready to start looking into multiplayer. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, click on the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.